TitleMatchNetwork.com. Memories of uh, Tommy Rich. Oh, Tommy Rich, the, uh, the best thing to tell you about Tommy Rich, he, he was not my tag team partner. He was not my friend. He was my brother. We was like brother. T, uh, 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 T for Tony, T for Tommy. Black and white, we fight all night. Huh. Salt and pepper team. And it was it was one of the first, you know, where they had a, a black wrestler and a, 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 a white wrestler to go out to be so close and, and to, to perform in front of the fans night after night. And, 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 we, and we fought for each other. If I got in the fight, Tommy was, would fight right beside me and uh, uh, vice versa. So uh, Tommy is one, of, is one of my very, very close closest friends. Did you get in a car accident with Tommy? And uh... Yeah, I broke my neck with Tommy Rich. Yeah, it, was, it was Tommy Rich, Johnny Rich, and uh, Nick Patrick. And Tommy had a, 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 a habit uh, when he drive, he turns all the way around in the car. Huh. So this time, when he turned back around, he was we was going over a cliff. I heard about that. Yeah, and I ended up getting a broken neck from that. Did you guys have heat after that, or is it no, <laughs> no? But because, because I knew that's how Tommy drove, so it wasn't uh, something he did intentionally. I'm very sure he, it was not his plan. He get up this morning, and say, well, let me drive this car off the cliff and break Tony out in his neck. You know, that, hey, that's a good idea. Let's do that. <laughs> I'm very sure that was not his intention, so it was an accident. An accident in the rest of the world do happen. What are your memories about Kevin Sullivan? Uh, I don't know if Kevin remember this, but uh, me and Kevin, I got him started in bodybuilding. I mean, I used to compete a lot. Kevin didn't work out with the weights. And Kevin started working out. It got real, real religion. Got with Dot Neal and everything. And he ended up winning uh, Tennessee State Bodybuilding Champion. He became. And he really, really got interested in bodybuilding. The next thing I know, Kevin ended up becoming a better bodybuilder than, uh, 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 than, than what I worked. But I remember when Kevin didn't even touch a weight. Hmm. And one day he got to talk to me about him. You know, he started going to the gym with me. And the, the rest is history. You look back on the... Tennessee uh, uh, a state champion. Uh, he was a state champion in bodybuilding. I think he won several other bodybuilding uh, contests after that. But the main thing that I remember most about Cameron Sullivan is his intelligence and his knowledge uh, of the business. I mean, you know, he had he had one of the brightest minds that this business uh, ever saw. He really knew what wrestling was all about. And third, but not least, it's a tough as nails. I mean, Cameron, Cameron would whoop your butt real good. You know, he wasn't very tall, but he was as wide as he is high. But but he was he was rugged in his day. Was a very very good man and a good friend of mine. Very good friend of mine. Did you get along with uh, Thunderbolt Patterson? I liked the Thunderbolt a, a, a great a, a great deal. I, I thought he you know he, he was a great he was a great talent and everything. The, I I say my only probably. Uh, dislike about him that he uh he was more for himself than he were for the business and he carried a lot of animosity from the from the past you know i didn't experience what he experienced you know where when uh haystack calhoun is in the dress room passing out kkk flowers in front of him and, and he went through a lot of bad uh racist uh stuff prior my meeting him so I, I, I couldn't understand his feelings, but as I grew older, I kind of put myself in his place because I didn't have to go through exactly. I, I was lucky. I was around a lot of good people like Cameron Sullivan, like Ole and Gene, and, and you know, a lot of people that, that, that was more about making money in the business than, than, than to try to humiliate me. But Boat worked a lot of bad territories, you know, where people was not happy because they wasn't making a lot of money. So he became the whooping post for a whole lot of people. So, you know, but but but, but a great guy in, in all. What about Abdul the Butcher early on? Well, my biggest remember was Abdul the Butcher, and it goes back to Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt spoke to Abdul would come in for six months and work in the States. Then for six months, he would go to Japan. So what ended up happening, he was coming in looking for somebody to work for. He supposed to work with Thunderbolt Patterson. Thunderbolt was a baby face, Abdul was a heel. So Abdullah, I mean, um, Thunderbolt didn't want to work with Abdullah. He said, we already know that match. Give me somebody new. So Abdullah said, well, give me the kid. 
So I started working with Abdullah, and then one night uh, they brought in Tommy Rich, and they wanted and Tommy was an unknown out of Memphis, and they wanted Abdullah just to beat him up. They had no plans for Tommy. Well, Tommy, when he walked out to the ring, I mean, every, at that time, every woman in the place just went berserk over mm -hmm. this guy. You know, they, they were screaming and all. You think Elvis had entered the building? So Abdullah got a beating mm -hmm. on him. They got the, they got the juice on him, and his beautiful blonde hair became bright red. So the fans were getting ready to come to the uh, the ring. Ole Anderson said, "Tony, go out there, and run Abdullah off before we get a riding on our hand." So I ran out there. The first thing Abdullah said, "Slam." And Abdullah never been slammed. But because I rushed to the ring, I, I was wrestling as Black Atlas then. I wore a mask. And when I ran to the ring, I go to pick up Abdullah to slam him. My mask comes off. And that was the beginning of Tony Atlas. I was Black Atlas before I was Tony Atlas. Wow. And and, and it was all by accident. And so then George Scott talk, called, uh, I mean, uh, only Anderson called George Scott said, said, I just got two people that just got over strong last night, Tommy Rich and Tony Atlas. He said, you got to let me keep him. And so they called uh, uh, a lawyer, told a lawyer they want to keep Tommy for a while. And that was the making of me and Tommy Rich. And amazing. it was Abdullah, the one that created it. Wow. What about the Briscoes? The Briscoe was, was great wrestlers, but not entertaining like Flair. I mean, they was out to have they, they, Yeah, they could out wrestle Flair all day long, but it was just the charisma and uh, it was just the whole package deal, you know. There, there were several people in the building like Flair. The first was Gorgeous George, and the next one was Buddy Rogers, and then that, that came Ric Flair. And there only been three people in this business with that type of, uh, uh, you know. Nick Bockwinkel was pretty classic. He was a pretty class guy, but but nobody it, 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 it take in the seventies and eighties there was nobody close to Ric Flair, not even close, nowhere. What happened in that territory with you uh, and Mr. Wardorf with the backstage brawl? It wasn't backstage. It was in a, a car or something. It was in a car. Yeah. Well, what ended up happening was, and if Paul tell the truth, he tell you the same thing. We, me and Tom Rich were riding together. When Paul and uh, Brando dealers they needed a ride, so I said, well, you know, uh, Tommy said. Uh, yeah, y'all can ride with us. So they got in the back seat. Well, I picked up some barbecue ribs earlier. So I had my ribs on the uh, on the seat. So Paul said, what is that stinky shit in here? I said, they're my ribs. Paul said, well, I'm going to throw them out. I said, Paul, if you throw out my ribs, I'm going to throw you out too. So we started changing words. Finally, he told Tommy, pull this car over. So he pulled the car over. As I'm stepping out the car, Paul sucker punched me. But I didn't feel it. Because I just got a high tolerance to pain. So I legged out of him and took him down. And I just held him down to the ground. Fanny Tommy said, All right, that's enough, guy. Y'all, y'all got, you know, y'all got what y'all need to do. So as I got up, I went back in the car. Tommy, Tom, uh, Paul apologized to me. I apologized to Paul. Tommy looked over. He said, Tony, your ear is bleeding. So I, I looked in the mirror, and this earlobe here was hanging. This little piece here was just hanging down. So Tommy Rich said, Tony, you want to go to the hospital and get that stitched up. You don't want to go around your whole life with your freak, freaking ear hanging down like an earring. So I went to the hospital to get it stitched up. The doctor said, well, you can't go home. I said, why? He said, because you was bitten by a human. He said, a human bite is the worst bite you could get. He said, more deadly, more positive than anything on the planet. So I spent the night there because I gave me a technical shop because of a human bite. Next morning, and that was the whole fight. Wow. Did you guys squash your heat after that? or was that Oh, yeah. We, we both probably never to talk about it. But then later, I saw a shoot interview with him. Uh, we probably did it. Yeah. And he didn't say what I said. He kind of made it look like he pounded the shit out of me, and I ended up in the house with him. Hmm. Which, the only reason I went to the house because he bit me. Right. And wow. I had to get a techno shot. It's crazy. And that's the truth. And Tommy Rich said the same thing. 